Lesson 10 practice problems for number one. It says here is a scale drawing of a swimming pool where one centimeter represents one meter. Now it doesn't necessarily say this, but um, you know, right here, this represents the drawing. You know, one centimeter in the drawing. Because it doesn't explicitly say this, but I think it's good for you to kind of make sure you know what these numbers represent. One centimeter in the drawing represents one meter in you know, in real life, the actual uh, swimming pool, one meter of the pool, okay? Now before I, I did this, I measured these and I got for this, this is 10 centimeters, okay? And for this I got five centimeters. Now this is a very, very simple um, ratio. It's one centimeter equals one meter. So that's very simple. So how long and wide is the actual swimming pool? Well, it's just going to be 10 meters and 5 meters. That's it, because every 1 centimeter equals a meter. All right, uh, for part B, will a scale drawing where 1 centimeter represents 2 meters be larger or smaller than this drawing? All right, where 1 centimeter represents 2 meters. So for, yeah, for this one, um, yeah, we've got to figure out whether it's going to be smaller or bigger. Now what, uh, what I think is going to be, and what I know, is that it's going to be smaller. It is definitely going to be smaller. Because, and the reason for that is because um, each centimeter represents a larger distance. So then you don't really need a, as big a space. You know, let's say I had one, I mean, this is kind of exaggerated, but let's say one centimeter equaled 10 meters, you know, then the pool, you know, the drawing the drawing of the pool would be literally that long, you know, so that's, that would be definitely smaller, right? And then the, the width of the pool would be like, like that, like half the, you know, so barely noticeable, you know, so it'd be really, really small. All right, make a scale drawing of the swimming pool where one centimeter represents two meters. Now since, since uh, what do we got here? Since one centimeter represents two meters, two meters right here, um, we just need to do, you know, if we just do 10 divided by two, that's gonna be five centimeters. And if we do five divided by two, you're going to get two and a half centimeters. All right, so you're drawing, you're, you're drawing at the pool, probably not going to look exactly like this, but whatever you did, uh, this should be five centimeters long, and then this should be two and a half centimeters long, right there. Okay. So a map of a park is a scale of one inch to 1,000 feet. Another map of the same park has a scale of one inch to 500 feet. Which map is larger? Explain or show your reasoning. All right, so um, this is tricky. It's definitely tricky to picture, you know, kind of in your head. Um, but what I'm kind of visualizing right now is just like, a, and I'm sure this is not the actual dimensions of it. What I'm thinking of is like a soccer field, for instance. All right. Uh, so soccer field, let's pretend the soccer field is a thousand feet, you know, it's a thousand feet long, you know, so, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So that right there, that's one inch, right? But it also represents a thousand feet, okay? So that represents a thousand feet right there. So I'm just looking at the the length of that field all right now if if um, if we look at the other scale which is one inch equals 500 feet then we're gonna have to do pardon me I'm not copy and paste this so then I can do exactly the same I'm gonna do two of these right here because each one of those represents 500 feet. 
together they make a thousand, right? They make a thousand. Looks like a decimal point, but yeah, that's a thousand. So you can see this one is, you know, the one to five hundred. That one is going to be the larger. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, <clears throat> no matter how you do it, it's going to be twice as big, <clears throat> scale wise. Um, the length of it is going to be twice as long as the one to a thousand. Right, so this one's going to be smaller. And the reason it becomes pretty clear when you draw a picture of it, and you kind of have some numbers there, you can see literally that, you know, 1,000 feet, uh, just one inch covers 1,000 feet. So if you, the more feet you can cover per inch, the you know, smaller that picture is going to be. All right, for number three, it says, on a map with a scale of one inch to 12 feet, the area of a restaurant is 60 square inches. Hans says that the actual area of the restaurant is 720 square feet. All right, do you agree or disagree? Now, one thing that kind of pops out at me for this one is that it says one inch um, is equivalent to 12 feet. So um, in the drawing, the area of the restaurant in the drawing is 60 square inches. All right, so what that means is, and I'm just going to do a rough sketch here, but pretend the square that I'm drawing is one inch by one inch. It's one inch by one inch. All right, and, um, but in real life, you know, because if it's one inch here and it's one inch, you know, all around it, um, that means it's 12 feet and 12 feet. Okay, so that's, 12 by 12. So that just one square inch, you know, one square inch is going to equal the equivalent of 144 square feet in real life. In real life. Okay, now it says right here that the picture on the map is 60 square inches. 60 square inches. So uh, now, and it says right here that the the area, or the supposed area, is 720 square feet. All right, so to get to 720, that would just be a few more, like, you know, if I just double that, I'm at 288, and then triple it, we're, we're at uh, three something, and 400 something, so we have to do 60 of these. It's gonna be times 60, because it says it's 60 square inches. So 60 square inches, so what you wanna probably do is do 144, times 60. I'm going to kind of, I always, whenever I multiply by anything with a zero, I always kind of push the zero off and um, then just kind of tack it on when I'm done. But six times four, that's 24. Carry the two. That's 24 again, but carry the um, plus two is 26. And drop down that zero. Yeah, so the actual area of the restaurant, you know, according to the information that was given, the actual area should be 8,640 square feet, which makes sense. You know, 720 feet, um, you know, ask anybody, that's, that's barely anything. You know, it's a, like a small apartment, um, if you think about that. So yeah, definitely a restaurant that could be that size. All right, so if quadrilateral, for number four, it says if quadrilateral Q is a scaled copy of quadrilateral P uh, created with a scale factor of three, what is the perimeter of Q? So quadrilateral Q is scaled copy of P. Um, so with a scale factor of three. So uh, the way perimeter works is that um, and scale factor, and we're not talking about area on this one, we're talking about just perimeter. So it's okay to multiply the perimeter by three. And that's gonna work. And so if we just add all that up, we got 15 plus 15 plus 25 plus seven. Right there, that's 30. Right here, that's 32. And so that makes 62. All right, so the, the perimeter of this one, the perimeter is 62. All right, so I'm not going to draw it, but 
Uh, if it says the scale factor is 3, then we can just multiply that by 3 to get the scale perimeter. So 62 times 3. 62 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Oop, why did I carry a 6? Put a 6 there and then 18. 186. So the perimeter is going to be 180. Does it give me a unit here? No. When there's no unit given, just write units. You know, you could do that. All right, for number five, triangle DEF is a scaled copy of triangle ABC. For each of the following parts of triangle ABC, identify the corresponding part of triangle DEF. All right, so angle ABC. Now, when it's written like that, angle ABC, um, I always tell people to kind of just trace it in that order. So ABC is right there. So we're really talking about that angle right there. And that corresponds to this angle right here. So if I kind of follow along with my, my pen, D, E, F. So that is going to be angle... D E F. That's what that corresponds to. All right, next one. Angle B C A. We do the same thing here. B C A. We're talking about this angle right here. We're talking about that. So that corresponds to E F D. Okay. So that's going to be angle E F D. Segment AC, let me erase all this. Segment AC is right here. Segment AC, and that corresponds to that segment right there, DF. Uh, illustrative math doesn't give, doesn't use symbols all the time, but the symbol for segment is just a, a line over the letters. Do that. No arrows. If you put arrows on it, then it's a line. But when you don't put arrows, you're talking about a segment, which is what we're describing there. And then BA, BA is right here, and that corresponds to DE, segment DE.